six percent of people who were asked, only six percent of the people said they don't believe in God. The rest of them were not saying that. So it's like people are self-identifying this way. And Richard, it's not fair for you to come along and just and have a, a questionnaire which trumps people's self-identification. It's also, Richard Dawkins, mechanistic, isn't it? It's just the wrong way to look at these matters. It, it doesn't actually tell us anything interesting. It tells us an awful lot. Um, when you say, I'm telling people what it is to be Christian, we ask them a very comprehensive list of, of questions you can look at the press release um, it would be very hard for anyone to deny that m that many of these questions most of these questions are fundamental to the Christian religion but you're if saying you they're not Christians even if they think of themselves as Christian you you know what they are even even though they tell you I'm, I'm not I'm not presenting my opinion here this press release is offered to people to look down it and say look these people who who call themselves Christians actually don't read the Bible don't go to church don't believe Jesus was the son of God don't even know what the first book of the New Testament is but, but Richard, I mean, if I, up if to I... you to make up your mind whether you think they're Christian don't ask me my opinion is not relevant Richard, if, I, if I said to you what is the full title of the origin of species I'm sure you could tell me that yes I could Go on, then. On the origin of species, uh, with, oh, God, uh, on the origin of species, um, there, there is a subtitle, the, uh, um, with respect to the, pre the preservation of favoured races in the fight, in the struggle for You're life. the high oh, pope of Darwinism. Not bad, and, actually. And you, I'd give you, you, some justice. But, I mean, but if you asked people who believed in evolution what that question, and then you came back and said 2% got it right, it would terribly easy for me to go, they don't really believe it after all. It's just not fair to ask people these questions. They self-identify as Christians, and I think you should respect I say something, you listen, let me finish, and then you talk, and I listen. Let's try that. What we're talking about today is how to interrupt people less. Would you please stop interrupting me? I'm sorry, sir, I'll get right on it. Will that be Well, all? I'm trying to answer your questions, and, and you keep on interrupting, so, so let, me, let me be clear. Children want and need attention from their parents, but constant interruptions become annoying. Short of putting tape over children's mouths, there are a few strategies I've tried to help reduce the interruptions and teach the kids a little bit of patience. Am I interrupting? <laughs> Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? An interrupting cow. An interrupting cow. <laughs> Theology is the study of God. It gives us. But didn't you say God isn't subject to science? So in what, didn't you say God? Didn't you say science can't? God is not subject to science? Didn't you say God is, is outside yes. science? So yes. in that case, if theology is study of God, how can it be a science? Well, Prince, let him answer the question, well, please. Yeah. Because I... We're not... We're not, we're not actually going to get anywhere if you're constantly no. talking over Bill. Please. Okay. Literary criticism is a source of knowledge. He says literary... I, I taught at Yale, and I can tell you literary criticism is a source of lack of knowledge. He points now, out that literary... Lawrence, Lawrence, can you please just allow Bill to okay. make the okay. final okay. comment here? Otherwise, we simply will be here all night. One friend of ours counted the interruptions. At Brisbane, Krauss interrupted at least 60 times, according to this one count. An approximate average of one interruption every 53 seconds. He hit the buzzer eight times. You heard this during it? This was a William Craig bullshit meter. I hit it every time. He talked about, he talked about science and got it wrong. So if we add this, that's a, uh, over 70 total interruptions. Yes. And somebody said I interrupted him just as many times. Well, let's see here. Uh, it looks like you interrupted him nine times. Oh. And mostly to tell him to quit interrupting. Yes. <laughs> so, in Sydney, you interrupted seven times. Shame on you, Bill. Yes. In Melbourne, a Krauss interrupted uh, about 75 times. Instead. So it's over 60 in Brisbane, not counting the buzzers, over 70 with a buzzer. Sydney, total of about 75 times, one interruption every 50 seconds. In Melbourne, approximately 70 times, one interruption every 48 hmm. seconds compared to your nine, seven, and seven. Hmm.
warfare would be ethos. one of these so let me, let me guidelines. Honesty, Within it, science, full as you have said, transparency. Have you said many times, ought to be. Yes, I'm sorry. In order I, I to have that moral ought, you, it tells you, you have to have something that is extra scientific. You'll come to results which flourishing for the greatest number of people. It's not an assumption I can ask. Spin-offs of evolution and well, social they, they, they would if we, that's not the issue, Doctor Cross. I didn't Whether say believing. Not, I said if God did not exist. Foundation for moral values. And so duty. which Say God? We, which God give the foundation for objective? So there's moral only values one of those duties. faiths that established. Science tells I, I how think, the world I think science is. Say, not how science, it ought no, to be. Look, what I pointed out the was children deserve to, are open. No. That's well, a that's what you said. Still is today. It's the yeah, land. Absolutely. And you would say, in fact, he is not obligated to prolong my existence Who for one second Who determines what more. God has decided? No, wait, let, let me finish. The, the whole problem only arises if you think that there's God not, there, there, no, there's a problem for the wait, wait, wait. Okay. I, I haven't got to my critical point okay. here okay. yet, though. Okay. And that is of a loving God. Well, uh, so just that, like, okay. ju- ju- okay. just like, okay. I'm I, sorry. I, I mean, I'm, uh, well, I'm so one last thing. No just wrong. like the people in the I'll World Trade Center, of, I'll bite my tongue on that one. Develop a consistent theory and account that would make sense of all the data. No, 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 no. The no when the efforts to develop a consistent account of the data fail. No, no, sorry. If I, because science can't exist without that conceptual framework. Well, it can framework. exist. And that, fact, that, that historically can't you're right. scientifically. No, no, I think the point is that that... Historically, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or, 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 or an evolutionary process which ha- can be seen to increase the information in the genome? Can you just stop when I think? I'm recording. Okay. There's a popular misunderstanding of evolution, which says that uh, fish turned into reptiles and reptiles turned into mammals, and, and so somehow we ought to be able to look around the world today and look and look at our ancestors. We ought to be able to to see the intermediates between fish and reptiles, or between reptiles and mammals. We ought to be able to see fish kind of on the way to becoming reptiles. But of course, that's not the way it is at all. Fish are modern animals. They're just as modern as we are. They're descended from ancestors, which we're descended from. Way back 300 million years ago, there would have been an ancestor, which was the ancestor of modern fish and the ancestor of, uh, of modern, modern humans. And that ancestor, if you could have been there then, you could have seen the first steps towards a fish, uh, say, coming out onto the the land and and becoming becoming something like an amphibian. But that was a long time ago. You wouldn't expect to see that today. And so uh, uh, quite a lot of the misunderstanding of evolution, I I suppose, stems from the fact that people are looking at modern animals and thinking that Darwin has said, we're descended from them. Well, we're not. We're not descended from from modern fish, we're not descended from modern monkeys, we're not descended from modern apes. They are modern animals just as we are. They are our cousins, they're not our ancestors. To use the word faith when there isn't any evidence. No, not at all. No. I presume you've got faith in your wife. Is there any evidence for that? On yes, which plenty. You base it? yes, plenty of evidence. Um, mm. I... Let's generalize it. Never mind about my wife. Let's generalize it. <laughs> it's the same with Biden, Richard. It's the same with Biden. Let's say, let's say that in general, how do we know that somebody loves us? Okay? Yes. Um, you can use a word faith for that if you like, but it's not the, it's not a, the right use of the word. Because, oh, it is. Because you, you know... Why you know your wife loves you because of all sorts of little signs, little catches in the voice, little mm. little looks in the eye. Um, that's the evidence that it is. Yes, that's, that's evidence. Right. That's perfectly good evidence. That's not faith. Yes, it is. Well, okay. Then, then we, we're coming down to pure to pure semantics. Um, I think you've been influenced too much by Kant. You see, uh, well, who, not explicitly, I have to say. Um, <laughs> let's, let's let the le- okay, let's let us go on. I want to address the who designed the designer question because it's the old schoolboy question who created God I am actually very surprised to find it as a central argument in your book because it assumes that God is created 
And I'm not surprised, therefore, that you call the book The God Delusion, because created gods are by definition a delusion. <laughs> now, I know, and I ought to explain, that Richard doesn't like people who say to him that they don't believe in the God he doesn't believe in. But I think that this is possibly touching a sore spot, because you leave yourself wide open to the charge. After all, you are arguing that God is a delusion. And in order to weigh your argument, I said that it is you who's arguing that God is a delusion. Oh, sorry. And in order to weigh that argument, I need to know what you mean by God. And if you say, if there is a God, you have to ask who created God, that means that you're reduced to thinking about created gods. Well, none of us believe in created gods, Jews, Muslims, or Christians. And I think that argument then is entirely beside the point, and you, perhaps you ought to put it on your shelf-marked celestial teapots where it belongs. Give one uh, last question for Dr. Rosenberg, and then we'll give you the results of the vote and close out. Dr. Rosenberg, I wonder if you might help me to understand how your view is not incoherent. Um, do you really claim in your book that sentences have no meaning or truth value? Uh, even the sentences in your own book? How is that not incoherent and self-refuting? Um, at least the sentences you've made tonight, surely you think, are true. Um, but if even you don't think that your position is true, why should we? Two paragraphs from the last page of the chapter of my book entitled, The Brain Does Everything Without Thinking About Anything at All. Now, of course, this is at the end of a long chapter in which I've talked about neuroscience, uh, Nobel Prize winning research by Eric Kandel, uh, the wonderful IBM computer Watson that beats us at Jeopardy, and about the best semantic and philosophical theories of intentionality. Pardon me for reading. Introspection is screaming that thought has to be about stuff, and philosophers and you are muttering, denying it as crazy, worse than self-contradictory. It's incoherent. According to you, Rosenberg, neither spoken sentences nor silent ones in thought express statements. They aren't about anything. That goes for every sentence in this book. It's not about anything. Why are we bothering to read it? It's not as if I haven't figured out that this is uh, an issue that is raised by science and, uh, uh, and in this chapter. And now I'll read you the last paragraph. Look, if I am going to get scientism into your skull, I have to use the only tools we've got for moving information from one head to another. Noises, ink marks, pixels. Treat the illusions that go with them like the optical illusions of the previous chapter, a chapter in which I said, don't trust consciousness because it's mainly mistaken. Okay? This book isn't conveying statements. It's rearranging neural circuits, removing inaccurate disinformation and replacing it with accurate information. Treat it as correcting maps instead of erasing sentences. Now, there's a big business in philosophy about the nature of semantics and about the, uh, the, how intentionality is realized. And I ain't so stupid as to contradict myself in the puerile way that you're suggesting. Okay? What you got to do is read the book to figure out the answer. And send me an email and I'll send you a really long and hard paper called Eliminativism Without Tears, which I have written to try to give a detailed account of why it is that we can still make sense to one another in spite of the fact that neuroscience shows that intentionality is just an overlay, like so much of the rest of our common sense views about reality, including the belief that the earth is standing still because things just fall directly to the ground. Very good. Well, let me go ahead and, and uh, read these tallies and then just close us out. Uh, it's not a, a scientific uh, result here, but we've got three interesting results nonetheless from a cross-section of audiences, our formal judge team, our Purdue audience, and uh, 
across the web, nationally and internationally. So uh, for the formal judging, in a four to two decision, our judging panel has identified Dr. Craig as the winner of this evening's debate. <laughs> 